Leave the configuration. I'm done. I say yes. It's recommended. Notice down here there's a big red. It recommends that you initialize. So we're going to go initialize them. And now this is what we have. We have two logical disks. This is a RAID 5 array. It's created from three disks. This is created from one. And it gives us our stripe size. It gives us some information about the RAID, RAID type uh, parameters. So I'm going to, it's writing that configuration down here at the bottom right now. When it's done, we're going to go ahead and initialize logical disk 1, because that's the one we just created. Okay, I'm going to the initialization menu, hit enter. I'm going to choose logical drive 1 to initialize. I'm going to press, and again, you're not seeing everything, but down here at the bottom is all your menu options, all the things you're going to do. And I'm going to go ahead and initialize logical drive 1. I highlighted, I selected it, I hit the space bar, I selected the logical drive 1. I'm going to hit F10 and that's all on the bottom of your screen there. You want to initialize? Yes. And it's going to begin the process of initialization. You can see the little progress bar that's going to go on. We're going to save you the, the pain of that. Video Magic is going to make that happen very quick. So now we've created an array, put three disks in it, made it array 5. Uh, then we saved that configuration information. Then we went to the initialization and initialized it. And now we are ready to go see uh, our operating system to see if it now sees that logical drive. Okay, here we are with the operating system. We're going to log on in our Windows Server 2003. We're going to exit out of that. I'm going to go to the Start menu down here. I'm going to go to My Computer, right mouse click on Manage. I'm going to open up the computer management console and I'm going to go to disk management and notice right away it says whoa I, I see a new disk and I need to initialize it so we'll say sure go ahead and it does see a new disk one we're going to go next oops I'm going to check that go next and it's going to see a new disk and convert a new disk and we're going to say finish and so you can see there is a new disk down here, right down here. And I'm going to zoom in if you'll just hang tight. And we'll take a look at it. And so I have a, I have a disk zero. This is what Windows sees. Now be very, very careful. Windows sees logical disks that the array presents to it. So don't get confused with this disk zero, disk one, because I'm going to show you how to really look at the underlying uh, 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 RAID controller. So we see uh, it, it recognized this new disk that we created. So I want to go and I want you to press on the disk zero, right mouse click, go to properties, and I want to pull this properties dialog box of disk zero. And I want to zoom in here and see if I can get a clear picture of what is really what you want to understand about the RAID controller. Let me back off a little bit. It's a little bit fuzzy. All right, so let's take a look. It is the, the disk zero that Windows sees is really the PERC logical disk zero. So the RAID controller created a, a logical disk zero. And that is what the operating system is seeing as its disk zero. So if I want to know how to correspond Windows disks with the Ray's disk, I must open this properties box. So here I see the perk, logical disk zero, and it is a it does Windows doesn't know any more than that. It doesn't really know much about what the logical disk is except the size and that it works. Let's go down to the other disk down below. I'm gonna go down here, I'm gonna right mouse click, go to properties. Pull this over so you can see it. Again, notice we're looking at the second disk in Windows. Notice we can really see what it what it translates on the RAID controller. This is the PERC Logical Disk 1. That's the one we just created. So even though right now, in the way that I have designed this, they kind of correlate be careful in complex RAID controllers, this can be really bizarre. 
The only way you're going to know the disk in Windows and how it corresponds to the RAID controller is go to the properties and pull up the RAID information. You can look at the RAID information. This is Logical Drive Zero. So when you go back in the RAID controller, you know what drive this corresponds to. I hope that makes sense. So let's go take a look. Let's right mouse click, create a new volume. We'll go through the wizard. Let me back up a little bit here. Hold just a second, folks. So you can see, we'll go ahead, a simple volume. Go through the, leave it at that size that it's presently at. This is a RAID 5 array underneath in the RAID controller, but Windows only sees one disk. It does not see those three physical disks that we originally started off an array. It only sees one disk. So it's going to format it, create a volume, give it a drive letter. Once it's done, we'll be able to go in my computer and see that drive and its size. And it's still working. Let's give it a chance to finish. Okay, I made the mistake of not checking the quick format. It was going to take forever. So I, I, I stopped the formatting, went back and restarted it with quick format. So it's done now. E-volume is 33 gigs. We can come up in my computer. We see a new volume, E-drive. 30, 37 gigs and so we're we're fat and happy now notice that Windows does not see that E is three drives it just sees it as one logical disk even though we know that this is really three hard drives uh, really being taken care of by the RAID controller now uh, that is actually represented by these disks over here these physical disks so these physical disks let me back up just a little bit these physical disks represent that entire RAID array. So if I go over here and pull one of them out, I just broke that array. I just pulled the hard drive out. Now if we come over here, we'll see that Windows doesn't have a clue that I just jerked a hard drive out. Why? Because the RAID controller is doing all the magic. The RAID controller is now calculating the missing drive and making it appear to Windows as nothing ever happened. But trust me, we got a problem. I've got a disk sitting with this flap out and you can actually see the physical disk here. So there's a disk totally missing. What's doing the magic is the RAID controller. It's calculating the missing data on this disk that I just pulled out. So I'm going to push it back in and slap it in place and let's go take a look at the RAID controller. Notice the lights are beginning to flash yellow indicating there is a problem. The RAID controller now sees the disk back in and it is really wanting to rebuild that array. Right now I have a very faulted system. I've got three hard drives involved. One is now in a fault condition, but notice it's only by the RAID controller. The operating system is absolutely happy. In fact, I can come up, go into E drive, and actually copy files into it. It functions absolutely normal. I'm going to open up another version of Explorer right here just to show you and I'm going to take uh, I'll just go into program files and I'll just copy everything in here into eDrive. Remember eDrive is in fault condition. Uh, one of the drives is not really functioning and yet you can see I copied with no trouble into eDrive. It acts just normal. We know it's not. I can come over here and see my light flashing uh, and I know that I'm in trouble with this array. But the array controller is doing all the magic, the calculating of the missing volume. So let's shut down and go in the array controller and I'll show you how to re rebuild this missing array or this now replace disk. So when you go in a server room and you see flashing uh, amber lights or yellow lights on your hard disk, please pay attention. You've got a faulted array. You better fix it and fix it quick. So you better order a new hard drive and you better order it quick because you only have only so much time. RAID 5 will only tolerate one failure. So if you have a second failure in that RAID array, you've lost the entire array. That does it. That's why backups are so important. You better have good backups. Right now, your RAID array is keeping you alive. We're waiting this for this to boot up. We're going to do a Control M to get into the RAID controller, and we're going to rebuild that array. So I'm going to do a Control M. It's going to eventually get us into the array array. 
and let's repair this faulted disk. Let's go into configure. Let's go view our configuration and we should see a fault. Let's go ahead and just view and add. We're going to go look at scanning uh, the channels and you can see I do have a failed drive. I'm going to zoom in here real carefully. You do see that I do have one of my disks on my RAID 5 is failed. So I need to go fix that and fix that quick. Uh, I can't afford to have another failure on another disk in that array. I better make sure my backups are doing really, really well because I'm really in a serious condition. So I'm going to come out of this. We're going to come back to rebuild and I'm going to hit the rebuild and notice it highlights right away and again all down here is all your options there's no guessing as to what to do you can always download the perk uh, manual online so I'm going to select this faulted drive and I'm going to hit uh, F10 to start the rebuild so I'm going to hit F10 to start to rebuild and it comes up do you want to rebuild that yes and I'm going to hit enter it comes up with a little progress bar okay it's beginning to work and notice it's got the rebuild term right here on that drive it's got the rebuild term and let's come over here to the disk itself and you can see it's flashing green it looks it's actually working this is the one that failed the one that I jerked out so we're rebuilding it right now and we're hoping to rebuild the array now notice I had to bring the operating system down to rebuild the array. Uh, so this is just part of the process, but I could keep the operating system running for most of the day with a failed hard drive. Well, let's say while all the uh, employer employees were at work, we could continue to work the SQL database or the SharePoint server. Everything could continue to function. It would be a little bit slower because the array controllers had to do all the work but it would still function and everyone could be productive. I would make sure my backups are running uh, and then whenever I could get a new hard drive, I would immediately go in, replace the hard drive, go and rebuild just like you saw that I have done and finish it up. Now, when it's done, notice at the bottom it says, okay, you're gonna get a couple different icons. One, it's corrected or inconsistent fixed. So uh, we're going to watch what it does as it rebuilds. This is about 10 minutes and you can see this is the progress rate for rebuilding that disk. It's not a large disk, but you can see that 10 minutes, uh, this is as far as we've been on progress. So rebuilding these disks this does take some time. So you'd be doing this after work, maybe late at night, rebuilding the disk and built, rebuilding the array. Okay, you can see our rebuilding of that physical drive is good, 100%. Any key to continue, notice it's online, so it sees, looks good. And we can come over here to the disk itself and see that the light is no longer flashing. There's no more uh, uh, alert indicators. It's green, just like the rest of the array. Everything is good. This is a phenomenal feature of RAID 5 and quality RAID arrays. So let's go back and build one more array. So you can watch me do this one more time. I'm going to go to configure. We know that we can choose the easy or the add view. We know we do not want to choose new. That wipes out our RAID configuration. Or we're going to have to reinstall the operating system. So we're going to go to the add view. View add. I keep saying add view. View add. Sorry. Hit enter. We're going to scan the array. And it should show us what we presently have. And you can see, we're, we're comfortable now. This is our C drive. This is logical drive one, one physical drive, one array, and one, one logical drive in that. And that's our C drive. Then we went ahead and selected three physical disks, created the array A01. We have three disks, 00, 01, 02, and those create one array, one logical disk. And we just broke that, we rebuilt that, and it's good. So we have two more ready disks down here. They're available. We can hit space bar. Hit the space bar again, and notice how they flash. That's indicating that you've selected them. And we're going to go ahead and end the array. So notice they stop flashing now. I've, I've chosen that as the array. And again, all of those menu items are at the bottom of your screen. I'm not showing you them in the video. I'm going to hit F10 to configure. We're going to span. I'm going to hit the space bar, and I'm going to span. 
Uh, we are now going to go into configure F10 and notice we have logical drive 0, 1, and 2, a new one. And we're going to choose RAID 1. Actually we're going to do, let's see what are my options here. I can do, let's do RAID 0, so that's without striping. So there are no redundancy. If I lose one disk, I lose my RAID, but it's a, it's a fast little. So we're going to use RAID 0, which is uh, striping without parity. And in my, I'm going to go ahead and leave the size of the drive as it is. If I go into the advanced menu, I can configure things like stripe size. And generally, you would leave the stripe size as default. A right back policy, we're going to use right back cache. I won't get into all that. And it's got different advanced features that you can apply to this array. And we're going to leave them all just as they are. We're going to accept the, accept the array. And we're going to save the configuration over here. Save the configuration. And it is now done. Now we're going to go initialize the drive, which is now the uh, logical disk number two. I'm going to come all the way down here to logical disk number two. And I am going to select that. Notice it turns yellow. And now I'm going to hit F10 to initialize it. Again, F10 is on the menu bar down at the bottom. Initialize it, yes. And it prepares the drive. As I pull it up, it prepares the drive. So let's reboot. Get out of all of this. Exit. 